Ready? You're on. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am Lady Christian Regan McNabb. I have been in the SCA for over 30 years. On top of that, I have worked at a couple of different, I've worked at one school. Uh, no, that's a lot. I've worked at two different schools working with, um, I don't work directly with students. I work with all the faculty who work with students. And so, um, and owning my own business and such throughout the years has given me a huge wealth of um, both giving and receiving critique experience. And um, so sometimes it's just kind of nice to have a refresher. So some of the stuff you may know, some of the stuff you may not know. Um, I'm gonna ask, go ahead, put the questions in the chat um, because I can't see everybody on my screen. And then um, my lovely moderator is going to uh, flag me and let me know when um, there is something that pops up that I need to respond to. Um, and you know, if you have questions or everything, um, please, please feel free to go ahead and ask. I'm not going to call myself like the end all be all expert, but I will give you um, my suggestion and my advice. So um, that being said, let's get into it. The easiest thing to start out with is what is critique? Because that's always kind of important. And why do I use the word critique? Um, uh, so a critique is a detailed analysis and assessment of something, especially a literary, philosophical, or political theory. I use the word critique, I use the word commentary, and I use the word feedback. And the reason I use those three words is because they are a lot less emotionally charged than other words that you can use, including all of our favorite constructive criticism, which thank you corporate America has made like an absolute athema of the statement. So since this is giving critique, the number one rule that is most important to remember is uh, breaking people is not an art form. That's not what we wanna do. So just try to avoid it. This is a volunteer organization. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. So the thing to remember is we want these people to continue doing these jobs. We want them to continue doing art. We want them to continue fighting. We want them to continue doing service. So our goal is not to kill their self-esteem. Our goal is to help them learn and grow. One of the things that's important to remember about critique is that um, the person that you are critiquing, if they stop to listen to you, they are trusting you. They are trusting you to be fair, to have your well, to have their welfare and their interest at heart. They are assuming that you have the well-being of the SCA as well. Remember that one of the SCA principles is the idea of chivalry, not the medieval knightly idea of chivalry, but the Victorian idea of the virtue of chivalry. That is probably one of the hardest things to remember when trying to critique somebody, especially because if you're somebody like me who has very strong opinions, you may wanna give somebody an opinion, but it may still come across as being too strong, too strident, too whatever. So uh, these are some handy um, tricks and tips to keep in mind when you want to critique somebody. Now, um, the first thing to keep in mind is, uh, does this really need to be said? Ask yourself, is this feedback that they've asked for? Are you obligated in some way to give it? You're somebody's peer, somebody's mentor. You're an officer higher up in the same hierarchy. Um, how would you feel about receiving this feedback? Is this, fee is this feedback something that may improve the SCA as a whole or maybe just their SCA career or none of the above? Ultimately, if you don't think you would like to get that critique or that feedback, you may not wanna give it. Sometimes you need to give that critique anyway, whether you would wanna receive it or not. And of course, the thing to remember is that feedback does help us grow. You're gonna see that's kind of a theme here. It does help us grow. So you may wanna go ahead and give that feedback anyway to help that person move on. Um, so that being said, balance your content. Um, they, the current buzz phrase for balancing your content or giving critique is using the feedback sandwich method. In other words, positive, negative, positive. And if you watch Food Network, which I watch way too much of, you will hear 
them do exactly this on every judging show. I like your dish. It's very pretty. Your potatoes are a little overdone, but overall, good flavor. Once again, positive, I like your dish. Negative, your potatoes are overdone. Positive, overall good flavor. It's a good way to go ahead and give somebody feedback. It is a good rule of thumb for you to use if you've just got one quick statement to make to somebody. Um, the, the only negative is it does kind of force you into making one statement and one statement only, as you'll see as we go ahead and go forward. Um, but it's important to remember that a positive or complimentary comment can still be a constructive critique, especially if you're gonna offer context with that point of view. So be specific with your feedback. Focus on more objective points than subjective points. Just saying, I don't like that is completely unhelpful. But on the other hand, stating a specific thing you don't like is, I don't like your potatoes, they're overcooked. I don't like your potatoes, not helpful. They're overcooked, helpful. Um, this allows you to focus on um, a single situation, not the person. So sometimes this is difficult to break down one from the other, but remember there can always be extenuating circumstances that are that you may not be aware of in terms of critique. Um, it may not be the person's fault at all. For example, invocation was too long. It's a great comment. Now they know you felt invocation was too long. However, bad comment would have been, you're a bad herald. May not be the herald's fault that invocation went too long. Somebody may have spoken too long. Something may have happened that wouldn't allow them to shorten it any. Once again, you wanna make sure that you focus on what the actual problem is, not the person. <clears throat> um, offer su uh, specific suggestions on how to improve. Break your feedback down into key points. Don't give your feedback as one big lump sum. Um, while giving those specific examples, uh, point them out. There's no need to highlight every single example of something that you feel that they did wrong, but just pointing out one or two key examples under a point should be sufficient. And you may not even need all of that. The intention here is to one, bring awareness to the things that may have been obvious about and also to illustrate what you mean. So um, you wanna sit there and say, hey, I felt that your meal was really good, but I felt your potatoes were overcooked. I can tell that your potatoes were overcooked because they're just falling apart and they have no flavor. And they taste a little dry in my mouth. Well, the person may come back to you and say, oh yes, I realize that, but thank you for making sure that I knew that. The person may also say, well, I don't understand what you mean that the potatoes are overcooked. At which point you could then go on to say, well, not only are they kind of overcooked because they fall apart and they feel like mush in my mouth, but they actually, strangely enough, also taste a little dry. And if they still don't get it, let them sit there and think about it a little bit. Sometimes it's just a matter of them getting away from it thinking about your critique and then coming back to it, they may have more questions. Okay. Sorry. Um, own your feedback. And by this, I mean, stick with I statements. Using terms like one or most gives a lot of weight to a statement that um, and actually ends up being a little too formal for some people. That's gonna cause people to kind of shut down and not necessarily listen to you. Um, remember that for the most part, we like to treat everybody in the SCA as if they're our friends, even if they're not our friends. So, um, because I'm not so rosy glasses to think that everybody loves everybody because I know I don't love everybody. Uh, so that being said, um, you know, you wouldn't want to go up to somebody and say, well, 
one would have ensured that invocation was shorter. You want to go up and say, I would have tried to make sure that invocation was shorter. And this is what I would have done. By continuing to say I instead of one or most or more formal speech, you're making this friendlier. You're keeping yourself even in terms of um, somebody, mentoring, somebody mentoring somebody else. You're keeping it a little bit more even. You're keeping a little bit more on balance and not putting yourself like way up here and putting them way down here. We have, um, uh, in the real world, I work at UC Davis Medical Center and I work with a bunch of doctors and I work for the medical school and I have a doctor who is very sort of old fashioned. She went to Harvard. She's crazy smart. And she always refers to when she ever she's trying to tell you that you've done something wrong. She always says, well, one would have checked that one wouldn't have done that. And one day I turned around and said, one wouldn't have this job. I have this job. <laughs> Not necessarily the best comeback, but it got my point across that I didn't necessarily appreciate the way that she was giving her advice. And I was kind of notorious for throwing her particular advice out anyway, because she likes everything very old school. She liked nothing better than to have like a nurse sitting there, like taking notes for the chart when she's seeing patients. So. Okay, <clears throat> think about your timing. We've all seen it happen both at SCA events and in the real world. So my rule of thumb is unless lives are threatened, you should never, ever, ever give anybody critique in front of other people. Um, You don't want to publicly humiliate somebody. You don't want to publicly embarrass somebody. I don't care if you've told them the same, the same thing 10 times and you're really frustrated with them. Don't do it in public. Don't do it on the list field. Don't do it right as court is breaking up. Don't do it where anybody might hear you. Wait, go and follow them maybe to their camp and talk to them in private in their camp. I hate to say this because it sounds like, you know, I'm not saying follow them into the shower and like talk to them while they're taking their shower. Don't do that. That would be weird and creepy. But following them to the shower when they're like in that kind of lull between leaving their camp, but they, before they get to the showers or something like that, maybe you can catch them there and talk to them a little bit. And if they say, wait, they may have to go to the bathroom or something. Let them go. I literally saw somebody at an event years ago, grab somebody's arm and stop them from going to the bathroom so that they could give a piece of advice, which I thought was a really, one, crappy piece of advice. Uh, two, was a really tacky way to do it. And three, um, you know, just unseemly. If somebody's going to the bathroom, let them go to the bathroom. And if they go, wait a minute, just wait, it's okay. There's nothing, unless somebody's about to die, there is nothing that they are, that's going to happen in the time that they go to the bathroom and come back that your advice would have stopped, theoretically. I don't want to think about something that would. Um, let's see, I've got comments. Yes, somebody has written in the, ch in the chat here. Um, is it worth starting by asking for a reason? Yes, and actually we're gonna talk about that a little bit further down. Um, I love Agnes's um, statement of praise in public, criticize in private, wish more people would do that. Um, and by the way, the comment or the, you know, the feedback sandwich, the positive, negative, positive, that's still a negative. So just because you start out by saying, wow, you did a really great job with your first court, but stop, just stop. Wow, you did a really great job with your first court. We're done. Follow them back to their camp, send them an email later, send them a Facebook message later, but keep this in mind next time or make sure that you recycle or you redo your book or 
have somebody to hand off your medallions, whatever the reason is or whatever your commentary is or whatever your critique is, hold that thought until they're not in public. Um, and yes, it is sometimes hard to do this in some competitions. And we're gonna talk about competitions a little bit later. So, but the other thing to think about where timing is concerned is not just in public, are they being seen? Is anybody else gonna overhear it? But also look at them. Do they look like they know that something went wrong? Do they look like they're having a bad day? Do they look like they're having a good day? And this is something that people don't think about. But one of my first events that I um, was the event steward on was a really big uh, kingdom-wide event. And the person who had convinced me to be the event steward for this event came up to me after the fact. And I was flying high. The days, it was a two-day event, no less. And the two days had gone amazingly well. I was so proud of myself. And I was just, I was ecstatic. I was walking on clouds. And this person came to me and said, well, that was really great, but, and proceeded to give me a whole bunch of feedback. And I was like, and by the time he was done, the polish had worn off the beautiful weekend and how much work I had done. And the fact that one of my very first events was a big, kingdom-wide event and to make it all the worse that person then turned around and said so you're going to do the next one right so you really don't want let them enjoy the day the event is over it's all right let them go let them be happy let them post on facebook facebook didn't exist then now i'm dating myself um let them post on Facebook. Oh my gosh, this event that I've been working for for three for the last three months went so well. I'm so excited. Give him a week, then you can contact him. It's not like he didn't know where I lived. He could come and tell me anything he wanted. Um. So and and there's this whole thing. I want to. I'm going to talk about something. Actually, not all my notes for a minute. We have, there seems to be this strange attitude in the SCA of, I don't know them, so I don't know how to get a hold of them. Ask around. We are a huge network. And I bet that if you talk to your 10, 10 of your friends, just 10 who are in the SCA, they're gonna know somebody that's gonna allow you to get a hold of this person. If you can't contact this person directly, somehow, you can probably find somebody who knows how to get you a hold of them. And you can do a little bit of networking. So once again, don't feel like you have to give anybody your critique right this second. It can wait. You know, unless somebody is dying. Now, if somebody is dying, one, try to save their life first and then have that. Give your critique. Save somebody's life. It's important. I usually get a lot a laugh there, by the way. All of you being muted is very unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was good, Crystal. That was actually pretty awesome. Okay. So uh, let's see. I think I have beat the think about timing part to death. So we'll move on. Uh, keep your language positive. So this can be really hard, especially if you're a cynic like I am, which is funny because most of people are going to be like, you're not a cynic. I'm like, oh, but I am. Um, instead of saying something like, wow, you did a terrible job with court, say, well, that could have gone better. There are studies that have been done by various psychological um, uh, firms, we'll say, um, not just medical schools, but various uh, think tanks and whatnot, that have proven that keeping your language positive allows people to be more comfortable with what you're saying. We're back to the friendly thing again. If you're more positive, then they're more likely to continue to listen to what you have to say. So being really negative about something isn't going to be very helpful. And in relation to that, 
be conscious of how your tone is coming across. Um, you know, instead of saying it with, you know, the old term, say it with a smile. Um, I had a uh, person I worked for who said, I can tell you're not smiling. And I was required to get a mirror and put it where I could see my mouth when I answered the phone so that I could look and see if I was smiling. Because my voice isn't light and bubbly. My voice makes it sound like I'm frowning. So I literally had to answer the phone and go, hello? And look at myself in the mirror. It was actually written into my performance evaluation. Um, so that being said, the term saying it with a smile and no, I'm not talking about like crazy weird joker smiles because that will come across as well. And it sounds kind of weird on the phone. Um, I'm just talking about like a small hint of a smile. Try saying it with a lighter tone, lift your voice a little bit. Uh, sound like you are, if you sound like you're a hanging judge, they're gonna take it negatively. So instead of saying, wow, those potatoes were overcooked, say it like, wow, those potatoes were overcooked. A little bit lighter, a little happier, a little less negative. If you know uh, my husband who has actually just left, <laughs> um, Thomas has a deep, but not the deepest voice I know. And one of the things that he had to learn in the SCA was trying to lift his voice up a little bit when he became a knight, because he would say something and it sounded with such gravitas that people would just be like, oh, he's like, no, 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 it's not that bad. People would be like, but you said blah. The exact same person could come by or another person could come by, say the exact same thing, slightly higher tone. And they'd be like, oh, okay, let me try that. He's like, but I just, so it's like one of those things he's had to learn. So um, let's see. Okay. Okay, I actually want to, I'm going to cut my, I was kind of done with that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself off. And um, okay, I am really bad at pronouncing names. Uh, if you talk to the right person, you'll, they'll tell you it's just because I'm just, what they'll say is it's because I started out as the court herald in the SCA. So therefore I'm like required. So um, Kun, Kun good, Kun, okay. I hope you know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm probably saying it like totally wrong. Anyway, um, is talking about um, making sure that your critique has the best interest at heart and the society's best interest at heart. Um, if you'll physically stop someone from going to the bathroom because what you have to say is so important, you don't have their best interest at heart. Is what you have to say actually selfish? Thinking out loud, um, I actually really like that. And that's a really good question to ask yourself. And that goes back to that whole comment about, does it really need to be said? Um, that is one of those statements that, um, I don't like to put that particular, like, I don't use that particular phrase in my class because some people could take it and think, oh, that's a really negative statement of, Selfish is really negative, so I don't want to think in those terms. But the fact of the matter is, is that you need to really ask yourself, am I being selfish? Am I just boosting my own opinion of myself by saying that? It's a great way to put it. It's a great way to think about it. And sometimes it's okay to take your comments, write them down, and hold on to them for a little while. Wait and see how, you, how things shake out. Maybe they've already had five people say the exact same thing that you were about to say. Maybe they've actually already set up people to give them actual critiques. That being said, you may also wanna check in with them and say, hey, has somebody talked to you about this? If you decide that you're not being selfish, that you do in fact wanna give this piece of advice or this piece of critique, check in with them. Has anybody talked to you about this? No, okay, let me say this to you. I think that this is important and move forward. Um, and part of this class is not that I'm giving you like the end all be all. What I'm hoping that you're gonna do is like find a couple things that are gonna work for you and move forward. And um, 
or maybe even just start up sort of some conversations and whatnot about um, ideas and how to like implement them in your way. Uh, yeah, the whole, um, Astrid, the whole mirror thing really actually was kind of annoying, but because he put it in my personal evaluation, I actually had to do it. So I gave the mirror to somebody else. She's like, oh, that's such a pretty mirror. I'm like, here. And I handed it to her like on my last day in that particular position. I never wanted to see that mirror again. Glad you were able to get rid of it. <sighs> yeah. The thing is, it was really pretty. I mean, it was a really pretty mirror. Like it was um, from Cost Plus and had like this sort of fake sort of like um, Moroccan thing going on around it. Okay. Telenor, don't let me forget to come back to your, your question, okay? Yeah, Ula, I think that that's actually one of the, I think that that particular critique, the whole smile on the phone thing is one of those things that um, especially, okay, I'm gonna step up on my, on my feminist soapbox. I apologize, gentlemen who are listening to this. I think it's one of those things that like male supervisors think that it's safe to say. And so like they give it, especially to young women. Oh, you need to say that with a smile. I have so much to say to you that I could say with a smile, but I won't, so. Um, okay, so we are definitely gonna talk about, um, I definitely wanna come back to Telenor's comments, um, both with the consent and with um, critique. So. Don't let me forget. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm like, wait, where was I? Um, so another thing to keep in mind is this is not the time for sarcasm. Don't try to be funny. Um, I know so many of us think, oh, but sarcasm, that's me. That's my idiom. That's my fill in the blank. This isn't the place for it. This is the time to be serious or at least earnest. And keep in mind that um, you can always use it later. If you need to kind of like lighten up the conversation, you can use it a little bit later. But also think about the fact that sarcasm is primarily insult said in a joking fashion. And yes, I wanted to look it up and make sure that I had the definition correct and I did and that is what it says. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that sarcasm is primarily insults. We say it in a joking manner. People for the most part know how to take that joking, but not always. So the best case scenario is that they're gonna think that you're joking and they're not gonna take you seriously. The worst case scenario is that they're gonna think that you're insulting them and that's not what you want either. So leave the sarcasm alone for the time being. Try to find a way to say it in at least an earnest, if not serious fashion. And then, like I said, if it starts to kind of get heavy or kind of get, you know, the conversation doesn't seem to be going well, lighten it up a little bit, you know, go ahead and make a joke or, um, you know, throw out a sarcastic comment there or something um, because you want to make sure that your point comes across. Otherwise, there's no point in you talking about it. And yes, as Eden points out, some people are completely literal and can't hear sarcasm. Um, I have a, a, a former friend who never spoke without sarcasm, but if you use sarcasm to him, he took you as like completely um, at face value. And if you stick around for um, the uh, accepting critique, one of the things I actually tell you is take everything at face value. Don't try to read too much into it. So, um, so avoid value statements and try not to be too judgmental. Um, this is really hard to do, especially when you're frustrated. And it's especially hard to do when you feel like you've made this comment to somebody, you know, a million times um, or 10, you know, 10, a million, whatever. Um, using statements like, well, that was a stupid thing to do. Even if you mean it kind of like in a joking manner, don't use that. This is not the place. And definitely don't use something like, only an idiot would do that because right there, 
I don't care what you follow up with. You could say, and I'm, but I'm going to give you a million dollars for doing it. I'm not going to hear you because I have shut down. I am done. I am. I may be unfriending you when I get home to my phone or my computer. So, um, you know, that is just not an acceptable statement. Um, and it's really judgmental. It's really not okay. Um, and I know that in the last year or two years, we've heard a lot about being um, politically correct and polite and nice. And there's actually something to that. And um, I have heard people say at an SCA event to another person, that was the stupidest thing that you could have done. Or, wow, only an idiot would have thought that was a good idea. The idiot comment was actually made about a fighter by their knight at the side of the Eric because they fell for a faint. And I so wanted to go over and like interrupt the conversation and just tell the night off. Um, Cause it was just such an, an ex, it was just such an unexcusable amount of bullying. <laughs> um, and I was told at the time, don't do that. He's just critiquing him. That's not a critique. That's an insult. Okay. Um, I'm trying to like read this while it's going popping. Yes. Actually, Terry, this is going, this, thank you, Terry, because this is where we're going next. So use a straw man. And in case you don't know what a straw man is, I'm not going to get into explaining it. I'm just going to say, you know, give a critique through a personal antidote. Um, it's one, it's so much easier to know that somebody else has made the same mistakes that you have. Uh, but also if you're taking critique or advice from somebody or feedback from somebody, probably you go ahead, you do respect them. You do respect their opinion. So one of the things that's easiest to say is remember misery loves company. And this is a good way to show your personal misery from the past is by telling them a story of how you did the exact same thing that night so easily could have turned around and said, I fell for the exact same faint once and don't do it again. And this is why you don't want to do it again. And this is how you, you, um, get around it. Um, in case you can't tell, I love to share my own personal stories. I find that it works better. For one thing, I can't always think of exactly the right word that I want, but sometimes I can give that, give the explanation I want by giving a story of how I have, um, been in a similar situation and how I've run into something similar. So yes, definitely running with, um, a personal antidote is always good. Um, the funny thing about uh, this particular piece of advice is um, I just have to share with everybody. I found it really funny because they said, uh, give a personal antidote or how something that happened to a famous person could be used as an example in this situation. And I'm like, so there was this time that King John of England lost all of his mother's jewels in the river Thames. And that's kind of like letting court go too long. Sometimes it doesn't work. Stick with, personally, I'm like, stick with the personal antidotes. Works so much better that way. So um, don't make assumptions. Um, let's see, hold on. I'm sorry, there have been comments that I wanna just look at really quick. I promise we're going to get into arts. I promise. Okay. Um, don't make assumptions. Uh, don't clap because it may go across the microphone really badly. Hope I didn't bl blast out anybody's ears. I did that in a meeting the other day and I was like, ow. Um, Ask about the process. Um, 
why something was done the way it does. Listen, be open and listen to their answers. Don't assume that they're wrong from the start. Uh, they may have a reason for doing things the way that they did it. They um, may know some may know of a better way to do something than you do. They may even have information that you haven't received yet. So remember, com communication is an art form. We don't all excel at it within the SCA, especially. I have noticed. Okay, maybe it's not just maybe it's just me. I don't know. Um, but try to be open. Yeah. And Think of it more as a dialogue. I've made this comment, now it's your turn to comment back. That doesn't mean that you have to listen to their excuses. You don't have to listen to, but it's not my fault. You don't have to listen to any excuse they give you. I'm just saying be open for commentary back. Not about your necessarily your critique, although you should probably be open to like something along those lines too, but be open to the idea that they may have a different thought process. Um, I'm going to share something really fast. So I do a lot of scheduling for um, my office. And so I schedule about 40 different doctors for when they need to be like on labor and delivery, when they need to be in the OR, when they need to be teaching classes or when they're in their own clinics. Trying to explain my job to my boss and my boss's boss who both have MBAs and come from a finance background is nigh on impossible. They cannot understand what I'm doing. I can then turn around and spend 30 seconds explaining the exact same process to most of the doctors I work with and the doctors are gonna pick it up immediately. It's not that I think that of myself as thinking in a very scientific fashion, but it does work very well for like small, tight, little boxes. So I can explain that to doctors who have a more scientific mind. However, finance people, I have to convert it into talking about dollars and cents for them to understand what I'm talking about. So it's a good process, it's a good, make sure that I know what I'm talking about, but it's not always the easiest thing to do. Uh, so this brings us to remember, not everything has to be done in the same way by everybody, um, except for taxes. Theoretically, your taxes all have, all of our taxes are supposed to supposedly done the same way. We know how that works. So, um, okay, and we talked about that already. So be realistic. Are you expecting too much from the person that you're giving critique to? One of the things that is often said is that we are a volunteer organization and that is one of the hardest things to remember, especially when you're talking about like a job or a service or something along those lines in the SCA. Most of us are not independently wealthy. In fact, I can't think of a single person that I know. I can think of one person in the SCA who is probably classifies as independently wealthy. Um, so, and he's not applying for any jobs, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, we don't, not, almost nobody in the SCA has tons of time to sit around and do this stuff. We're doing it around our family and our work and our other commitments. Don't expect that somebody necessarily has the same kind of time that you do or the same dedication to the SCA. They may have other priorities. They may have small children that they want to raise or may, be really adamant that they have to spend every Sunday at the uh, animal shelter, petting all of the animals that are in the shelter um, for lack of human contact or something. This may, they may not have the same priorities you do. So try to keep that in mind when you're talking to people, especially somebody who's like doing a job that is long-term and repetitive. Um, this is the hardest one for people to swallow usually. So I'm just going to throw it out there. And that is that, uh, I highly recommend offering continuing support. Now, that being said, I'm not asking you or suggesting that you're going to start a formal association with everybody that you give a critique to. I'm just suggesting that you leave it open. If they want to follow up with you about some of their comments, be available, maybe offer to listen next time that they're going to do a court or, um, if they're gonna be doing a job, offer to help them or maybe help them brainstorm on their next project. Making yourself available makes it seem like you're really more invested in them and the good of the SCA and their SCA career than just wanting to give somebody some sort of piece of advice and like close the door and never talk to them again. Um, then finally, finally in my service-based stuff, because 
I was told to make it service-based. Um, think of the importance of reading people, which in and of itself could be a, its own class. Um, so, you know, the art of reading people can be very difficult. People are very different. Try to know your audience. If you don't know your audience per se, that's okay. But when you're talking with somebody you don't know, try to fall back on current social cues, which yes, means you have to pay attention to the current social cues. Remember to be polite, um, but look at them, pay attention to them. Do they seem to be shutting down? Do, uh, are they zoning out? Are they staring off into space? They may just be thinking about what you're saying, but more than likely, they're not going to hear what you're talking about. Stop talking at that point because your message isn't going to be received. Do they seem to be getting upset, worked up, upset, angry, sad? I don't know. Um, your message is going to be taken the wrong way. I can almost guarantee it. Are they engaged in opening listening, but their child or their spouse or their partner or their campmate needs their attention? Offer to email and Facebook message when it's convenient and they have time to pay attention. And you guys can start up a dialogue that way, maybe. You don't, as I said before, you don't have to give the feedback right now. It can wait unless somebody is going to die, in which case you shouldn't be giving feedback. You should be calling 911. So, okay. Before I get off of like just general critique, sort of service related, does anybody have any questions for those before we go on to like art and art displays and anything? I do have a question. Okay. And this is really personal, but a lot of times when I'm trying to be positive about something that somebody has done, okay. being effus effusive and complimentary, I am frequently, and I mean like at home, almost on a daily basis, asked if I'm being sarcastic. Now they know my family knows to ask me if I'm being sarcastic, but if I'm talking to somebody who I've never met, I have been told, why are you being so sarcastic? You know, I'm looking at somebody's brooch and I'm saying, oh my God, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Something about my tone or my accent. And I don't know how to get past that. So because I'm, I'm being assumed, it's being assumed that I'm being critical right. and nasty and yet I want to give feedback. I want to, you know, and I'm not saying anything negative. It's literally in these positive moments. It's, it's literally like, wow, that's a really nice brooch. Wow, I really like that brooch. I would love to wear that brooch. Yeah. So one of the things to remember is as much as I hate this particular phrase is actually use the phrase less is more. Um, you know, make sure that you say, I really like this brooch. Mm -hmm. um and maybe one more statement of like i love this brooch stop there mm -hmm. um move on you can even follow up with them later and say you know i've been thinking about it and i just i really loved that brooch um when people start to give become too um complimentary it it can be seen as especially in modern society it can be seen that you are making fun of them or you are being sarcastic or something along those lines. So that's the point to like, just kind of back off a little bit. So, um, you know, like I said, kind of stick with the, sort of like the less is more. Try doing the sort of like lightening your voice a little bit. Um, say it with a smile kind of a thing. Um, instead of just going on and on about how you really like this thing, you might want to say, I love the way that you used, um, the gold of the metal and the red of the stone and the way that they combine together is just beautiful or something along those lines. So start like getting more detailed if you feel like you haven't said enough by just saying, wow, I really like that brooch. It's really nice. Does that help a little bit? Maybe, maybe not. Yes. Thank okay. You. I mean, if not, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Agnes, Agnes just said, uh, oh, where's my chat? Um, a lot of SCA folks were bullied, so they are mistrustful of overly friendly people. And sure. yeah, I am 
I am an overly friendly person and that is frequently taken the wrong way. <laughs> okay, I just have to say this. This has nothing to do with critiquing. Crystal and Ula are wearing the exact same color headdress with the exact same colored corn. I almost uh, did that too. <laughs> and on my screen, they're right above one another. And I'm like, I keep seeing it out of the corner of my eye. And I'm like, why is that duplicating? All right. Because nobody else got the memo. I know. I I don't think Aww. I can actually wear that particular blue. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to like just scan what things that people have written so that I can get back to Talonor's comment or question. Um, so if you have things that you want to add in or whatnot, go ahead and add them in. Um, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about everything I can. Okay. Um, all right. So we've had a couple of comments about judging and, um, making comments both on judging forms and art displays and that kind of thing. And so, um, I have good and bad. So I'm going to relate two quick stories with you. And then I'm going to explain why I want to relate these two stories with you. The first is, uh, I'm kind of notorious. Um, and unfortunately, the person who wrote this bad critique will forever be notorious, although I never give that person's name. And that is that I once had a judge enter on my art dis or my uh, art competition. That's a bad resource. That was it. That was the critique. That's a bad resource. Not, hey, this applesauce is really good, but perhaps a little overspiced. Nope, just that's a bad resource. I'm sure that this person thought that they were doing me a favor. They were not doing me a favor. I have still not learned and I've never entered another cooking competition because while I now know what a good and a bad food resource is, I had nowhere to grow from that. Um, my other comment is I take the time to, uh, when I can, I take the time to go through and critique or at least give comment to anybody who is interested anytime that there's an arts display, whether it is in person or um, on or virtual. And part of that is my Laurel many, many years ago took me to, uh, took me aside in an event and said, we are going to go through and you are going to critique every single piece of art that is on display. And, um, and I did, and it was an interesting learning experience. The next time that I was at an event, I was the one displaying and nobody critiqued my art, nobody. And um, that was really hard to deal with because my Laurel had made sure that I went around and critiqued all of my peers, but nobody had made sure to do the same thing for me. So, um, okay. So those are my two like first experiences. That's part of the reason that I like teaching this class and why I put one finally together um, after all these years, put a new one together all, after all these years. I haven't taught this class in years. Um, so um, Telenor's class, uh, question is, if it's not okay to provide critique in public, how does that relate to a participant judged competitions? And if joining a participant judged competitions, um, would somebody give me a five minute comment uh, just so that I know a, um, at uh, five after, please. Yep, I can do that for you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, if joining a part, uh, if joining a participant judged competition, giving permission to accept critique in public, but restricted to the safe space of the other participants. Okay. So, um, for the most part, most arts competitions are critiqued um, in writing, except for, uh, it, it has been my experience. Let me, let me just say that. In my experience, it has been that arts competitions with one exception are done in writing. The, the critique is done in writing. The only place where I have ever been judged face-to-face -face is in anything performance related. Art, recitation, song, music. Um, I'm sorry, that should have been dance, recitation, music. 
you guys get the idea. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. Um, I try really hard when I have critiqued or judged a competition, I try really hard to make sure that my critiques are something that I would be okay getting. Knowing perfectly well that there are going to be people who are going to read it. First and foremost, the number one person who's going to read it is going to be the arts and science um, officer. Is going to read it because they've got to tally up the responses. Uh, one arts and sciences competition that I entered, actually the judging forms were all folded up. So the scores were at the top, but the critiques were at the bottom. And so they were folded up and paper clips shut so that even the ANS officer didn't actually read the critique. You can do something along those lines. You can always do my favorite thing, which is I try to always write at the bottom of my critique, hey, come see me and let's talk about this. And then if it's really important to me, I then try to follow up with that person. Um, at uh, 12th night, I went through everybody's um, uh, arts displays if they were open for critique, I left a critique. If they were open for commentary, I um, only made a comment. And if they didn't have anything, obviously I just didn't put anything. Um, I had three people I thought was really important for me to follow up with the following day and actually went and found them online. Two of them I was already friended to, so that made it easy. Um, so I went and found them online and followed up my comments. Um, and the reason I did it the next day, normally I would have given it a week, but I didn't want to forget because it was online and it was like, you know, telescoping time thing um, of this modern virtual world is kind of difficult. Um, consent. So consent is a really interesting issue when dealing with critique. I come from a background uh, so like I said, I have been in the SCA for 30 plus years. I've lived in three kingdoms. I've lived in both the Mists and Sanagua while living in the West. I lived in Drakenwald and I lived in Kaid about six times. Um, Cause I keep going back. Um, I have lived in the West longer than I've lived anyplace else. Um, when I started in the SCA and uh, it was my experience both in Kaid and in the West that critique was open and acceptable so long as it was given politely. Um, I know that that has become less and less common and there is now definitely more of a, a thought about consent. And I talk a little bit more about this in my accepting critique than in my giving critique class. So um, if you are one of those people who is uncomfortable giving unsolicited uh, critique or feedback, don't give it. You can also always go up and I have had people do this and I actually really appreciate it because I like getting critique and feedback. So um, I have had people who have come up to me and said, I'm not sure if you're okay with getting feedback. I wanted to say something about the class you taught. And I will most likely go, hey, hit me with it. Um, you know, there may be, I may be like, I would love to know it, but could you give it to me later? Or could I follow up with you? Or could you send it to me, you know, in writing for whatever reason? Um, so, you know, consent is a thing. And there are definitely people within the SCA that are not okay getting critiqued. And if you get that impression from somebody, don't. If you're not, if you're afraid to give it to somebody, don't. Um, and I know that afraid is kind of a strong word, but some people literally are afraid to give critique because they don't want it to hurt their friendship or hurt somebody's feelings or something along those lines. Just open the communication, talk to them. If they don't wanna to talk to you, they'll tell you or they'll avoid you. You'll know somehow that they don't want to hear it. If you go up to somebody who hasn't solicited a critique, you have no reason to be giving the critique. You think it is important and it doesn't fall into the category of, unless somebody is going to die, make it as nice and as light as you possibly can. Because if you don't, you could ruin that entire experience for somebody and they may never wanna do something again. Like- You're at your five minute mark. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, 
Telenor, did I hit everything that you wanted me to hit in that particular state question? Telenor is still here. Telenor is gone. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, Terry says exactly what I'm talking about. Um, go to them, say, may I, uh, may I offer some feedback and then use positive, negative, um, positive sandwich um, to make accepting feedback um, as positive an experience as possible for that person. Um, da, da, da. So um, somebody comments and says, um, it takes energy to process somebody's sarcasm. Um, energy is a really big thing. It takes a lot of energy actually. Um, and I wish I had thought to talk about that. I didn't think about it until I just read this. It does take a lot of energy to actually give critique and give commentary and think about what you're saying. So give it some thought. Don't do it if you're tired. That's the great thing about virtual art displays right now is that, um, or virtual service even, you don't have to answer right this second. You don't have to respond right this second. If you're not judging or you're not going to do like, or it's not like a, a a uh, populist prize competition, hold off, wait, make your comments, put them aside. If you're too tired to do it, don't do it now. Don't do it tomorrow. Do it when you've got the energy to do it. Um, like I keep saying, it doesn't have to be done right this second. <coughs> you guys have such a great conversation going on here. So there's about three minutes until the other classes start, which means you okay. have started that time. So if anybody has any questions, please, or wants to talk about it, hi Alice, uh, or wants to talk about anything else. Oh yeah, I have to drink again, don't I? Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um, if anybody has any questions or any wants to carry on any more conversation, um, please go ahead, contact me. You can reach me on Facebook under Shannon McSmith. M-C-S-M-I-T-H, or you can, um, uh, well, that's how you reach me. You can put in Christian Regan McNabb, um, or you can uh, email me at uh, P-A-N-D-O-O-R-A-H at comcast.net, which I have just put in the chat. Um, I'm just a little slower to respond to email. Just because I get a lot of it at work, so I'm a little less likely to read it first thing when I get home in the evening. Um, there is not a handout currently. There is going to be a handout. I was literally making notes up until about a half an hour ago. So um, if you are interested in a handout, please send me a note on Facebook or send me an email so that I know to send you one. And I will make sure that uh, it gets put up someplace where you guys can get it, get to it. So thank you, everybody. I have to take a drink because I have to start another class. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording now. Okay.